Hello, I'm Subramanian Ramamurthy. I'm a lecturer in the School of Informatics here in Edinburgh, and I lead a team of scientists who will be exhibiting at the Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition under the exciting title of Games Robots Play. I'm in a very special room in this building that I work in, and this room is called the Turing Room, which is dedicated to all things Alan Turing, and some of the artifacts that you see behind me are paintings that celebrate the work of Turing. If I could go back in time and meet a historical figure, Alan Turing is the person I would most want to meet. And if I were to meet him, I'd like to ask him how it is that he came up with the questions uh, that led to the creation of my field, which is computer science. So Turing was able to not only uh, make fundamental contributions to the field, but also start a number of different areas of research, ranging from complexity theory to artificial intelligence to mathematical models of biology. And what I'd really like to understand is what was going through his head when he was coming up with the questions, when he was trying to ask, you know, can a machine think? Are there limits to the ways in which computers can operate? And these are the kinds of things that we still grapple with today, and he's the one who showed us the path. As a scientist, I'm often asked, what's the most important thing yet to be discovered? In my own line of work, I think the most important thing we need is a theory that explains how it is that we limited people with limited computation, limited information, and noisy communication come to represent the world that's infinitely complex in uh, very concise and uh, easy to deal with terms. And people often distinguish between heuristics and irrational solutions that are used on the one hand and optimal solutions that are used on the other. And if there's one principle that we really need, it would be something that reconciles these two things. Somebody I know like to say, what's life without an impossible dream? I have an impossible dream of my own, which is to go climb mountains, be an explorer, go places where nobody else has ever been. Funnily enough, that's exactly why I became a scientist. Because I think of uh, science as being the same process of trying to ask questions, very difficult questions, that are like the peaks of these impossible mountains. And for at least a brief amount of time, uh, we are the explorers who are trying to find answers. And we are trying to find a way to get to this peak and get access to this incredible vista that you get from the top. If I hadn't specialized and become a computer scientist, if I could go back again and choose, would I pick another area? I think I might have. And that area would have been philosophy, politics, and economics, following the footsteps of people like David Hume and Adam Smith who worked uh, in the city and more or less in these buildings that we see here to create uh, these fields of philosophy, uh, modern economics as we know it, and the understanding of society and politics. And I particularly like this area because it feels very relevant now that I have moved across continents, seen different cultures, met different kind of people, and I really want to understand what it means for a society to function and what are the principles that govern uh, how these things work. But then when I think about it, I realize that much of what I do today in computer science is already connected to some of these things. And one of the most exciting areas that uh, we are working in is the interface between ideas in economics and computer science as applied to autonomous agents. What do I do in my free time? Well, there's not that much of free time these days now that I have a group to manage and a little kid to take care of sometimes. But I do have some free time. And in my free time, I like to read quite a bit and watch films. I like to read authors like Jhumpa Lahiri, who writes uh, about experiences of people who moved from one country to the other, which is something I did quite a bit of. This is the eighth city and the third continent I'm living in. I like to read uh, Orhan Pamuk, who writes eloquently about older cultures and especially cultures that were in crisis, like the Ottoman Empire. And I like to read lighthearted things like P.G. Wodehouse. I really like Bertie Wooster. And I like films as well, uh, and, and in particular, I like directors who, who talk about life as it really is without any more complications imposed by outside characters. So I like Satyajit Rai, who, uh, who's an Indian director and who, who made a lot of films about just complexities of life as it is for normal people. And I like a Japanese director named uh, Takeshi Kitano, uh, who's a lot like Satyajit Rai, except uh, he makes things with a lot more contemporary and modern twists. 